I'm continuing my discussion of the problems of evil and suffering in the world, the so-called theodicy problem. And by the way, if you want to read more about this, pick up a copy of my book. In hardcover, it was called God Forsaken, but in, in paperback, they changed the title. I wasn't entirely in favor, but it's called What's So Good About God? And I'm drawing on that book in this episode today, and I'll probably only be able to touch on a few of the key points, so I'm not going to be able to go as in-depth as I would like. I Maybe sometime, some other time, we'll do a whole course, a whole series on this issue. But I mentioned in the last episode that the um, this idea of putting God on trial and saying to God, in a sense, can you account for the evil and suffering in the world? This isn't just something that atheists do. They do it to score points. But there are believers who fall into a situation where they also have a beef with God. And very often it's for personal reasons. You lose a family member, you, you lose a sibling or a child, and you go, oh my gosh. So suddenly all the deep faith that you thought you had all along starts to crumble away. Now, one guy that I've debated on this topic, and I would call this guy an ex-Christian. This is Bart Ehrman a professor of religious studies at the University of North Carolina in Chapel Hill, he was raised as a fundamentalist. He was raised as a kind of a conservative evangelical. And he says that he lost his faith over this issue, over the uh, problem of evil and what he calls, quote, unspeakable suffering. He goes, that's the reason I lost my faith. And when we were having one of our conversations, and this, I think, if I remember, was on a campus, he began to say, I discovered that there's, you know, hunger and starvation and famines and poverty. And I'm like, Bart, you're in your 50s. Did you discover that like now? Uh, haven't you known your entire life, if not your entire adult life, that the world is full of suffering and that suffering is pervasive in, in all societies? Uh, it seems to me a little unbelievable that this is some kind of a midlife discovery on your part. But nevertheless, Ehrman continued to insist that his so-called deconversion, that's his phrase, was because of this. And he said, uh, he said, it's not that I don't believe in God, Dinesh. I'm not actually quoting him. He goes, what I don't believe is the God of the Bible. Because he says, I read in the Bible that you've got this God who cares about us. And you've got this God who uh, had his own chosen people. And he looks after them. And he works miracles for them. And he shares their suffering. And then I read about Jesus who healed the sick and gave sight to the blind and made the lame hungry. But he goes, where's that God? Why isn't he like in full operation today? So, so this is Ehrman. And I said to Ehrman in our debate, I was like, well, Bart, you know, what are the, what are the tragedies that you've experienced directly that in your mind call God's existence or God's benevolence into question? And then uh, Ehrman says this, and he, he writes this actually in his book called God's Problem. He goes, um, he goes, um, his life, he goes, looking at his own life, he says, I am fortunate beyond words. And he says, but I don't have anyone to express my gratitude to. Uh, he says, there's a void inside me, a void of wanting someone to thank, but I don't have, in a sense, he says, anyone to thank. Why? Because he doesn't believe anymore in God. So I'm thinking to myself, here's a guy who sees his life as a gift. He wants to thank someone for the gift. Obviously, he didn't give himself the gift. Uh, his parents were the instruments of the gift, his life, but they didn't create the gift either. Um, and um, yet he doesn't want to thank God. Why? Because he blames God for all this suffering, but it's not suffering that he himself has experienced. It's other people's suffering. Well, who's suffering? Well, apparently it's the suffering of people who live really far away, like suffering of people in Mogadishu, oh, Dinesh, you know, you come from India, you should know the suffering of the people in the West Bengal, the people in Sri Lanka, the people in Thailand. So the weirdness here to me is this. You've got Bart Ehrman, who is interpreting the suffering of others to point to the non-existence of God, but those others don't feel that way at all. The people in third world countries aren't rejecting God. In fact, historian Philip Jenkins says that there is a kind of massive revival of religion and particularly of Christianity around the world. Or think also about previous eras when suffering was much greater than it was now. I mean, people grew up with horrible diseases, 
There were no pain-killing drugs. Uh, infants and mothers routinely died during childbirth. And at the same time, there was no big atheist revolt in like the 6th century AD or the 12th century where people go, oh, our suffering is unbearable, let's blame it all on God. That didn't happen. So at times in the past when suffering was worse and in other cultures where it's worse today, you don't have this kind of intellectual rejection of God. What I'm getting at is that this problem, the problem of theodicy, this problem that says in effect that there is an inconsistency in positing an existing and benevolent God on the one hand and accepting and looking at the problems and suffering in the world on the other, this is a little bit of a Western phenomenon. This is in fact, and I think think I'll focus on this in the next segment, this is not a problem that occurs in any other culture and it doesn't occur in any other religions. This problem simply uh, is unique to the West and the developed West and it's also unique to Christianity.